today or tonight we have a small night mission um goes like this we're going to meet up my friend Yanni who has a really nice wooden boat a huge wooden boat that was like a derelict completely trashed out left for dead outside for maybe 20 years so you can imagine what a, how a wooden boat looks after that so he has like started this project where he's gotten funding and all kinds of uh, different companies to help him with the restoration of this boat so now they have probably like removed and uh, replaced maybe 80% of the entire boat with new parts and well it's a quite amazing project what one man can do so now we're going to meet up with him um, he's gonna explain to us a little bit about the boat a little bit also about what his plans are with that and we're also gonna watch him uh, do some work on the boat so he's now at the moment he's he's uh, finishing up some uh, wooden part with varnish and uh, that's gonna look quite amazing because it's a pretty hefty transition from like pure wood into like a completely um, varnished out finish so it's a glossy and uh, like a mirror-ish finish on the wooden surface so hey let's run out to the car and then uh, we'll drive straight to his place or you know, it's actually the place where the boat was built it's now a privately owned uh, facility there's a lot of like stuff going on in the summer but back in the days it was like a boat wharf so it's called Oboboard Wharf and it's uh, I think it was like active from uh, beginning of the 1800s or 1900s sorry to like maybe 1950s and that's when the, the place closed down but now that has also been restored so it's gonna be an exciting uh, night uh, looks like 12 p.m. here so see ya fun fact about me as well I'm such a good person I'm the perfect man I only take the stairs I never take the elevator. Uh, yeah, maybe sometimes. If you see me take the elevator, consider me exposed. But now, today, at least, <laughs> I'm taking the stairs. It becomes like a habit. I made a video about habits as well, where I talk about how easy it is like to get all you know, worked up in some, something that you, you think you need. Like for example, taking the elevator to maybe second or third floor which is like too stupid to say the least but yeah so i've been like a big let's say um, a big stair guy since maybe six months back you should take the stairs too just start doing it and never look back i left the car in drive what the fuck the car was also unlocked, but now we are on the run. Or oh, like, not on the run, I mean, <laughs> on our way. <laughs> Fuck, this place is like this, this spot here, it's so rough to get out of it. If you're in a hurry, you're gonna like probably hit someone or something. Uh, but yeah, see you in a bit. Off to the boat yard. When you're doing anything in life, Maybe YouTube or filmmaking, whatever, like uh, figuring out a new sport, anything actually that is new to you. You get so caught up in like the pros and how they do it, like after years and years of practice, like probably starting out with cheap and simple gear, then you like look at that and then you think maybe, maybe I should have all of those fucking gadgets and shit and and only then i can like succeed or even like you know i don't, I don't fucking know that's a stupid like stupid uh, thing to say to oneself like hey i need all of this shit to make it happen when in in fact it's, it's like only like uh the hours that you put in that matters so you can even like borrow gear you can borrow things from from people or hire someone to show you how to do it with like their gear, like a, a coach or something. But all in all, like 
doing YouTube videos like, like this, it's it's just an easy thing to do. You just have to like stick the camera to your fucking hand and do the shit. And then when you are doing it, you're just realizing that how much of the things you bought were were just like like gadgets, nothing else. Like it, it's it's an easy thing to say for me when you try the gear and then you understand that it's unnecessary but still point being before you try it there's gonna be tens and hundreds of people saying you need this you need that you should do this that this and that like in which order and all that oh here smells like shit like not me but it was someone else no actually I don't know, it smelled like sewer or something. But anyways, uh, like, yeah, so it's so easy to get caught up in, like, people's advice and shit. But don't do that. You know best. Uh, just use the things you have, like, and start out there. You're gonna see quite soon if you like it or not. And if you don't, like, then don't invest all of your money into gear. Uh, just a quick, like, quick, quick note to anyone watching. Like if you're gonna if you're gonna get good at like bicycle or cycling or skiing or anything, like you shouldn't buy a five or ten grand bike or like the most expensive skis. I have I'm good at skiing. I, I like to think that I am. But I have like ten year old skis and I just I I I, I like uh, I keep take good care of them. Like they are really good. And also my my boots are old. I I, I don't want to trade them in. They're like probably worth like 10 euros now or something. That's like, you know, not not that much. So <laughs> with that said, like I I do still fine with those. I fucking love those gears. And if I had to buy something new today, I'd probably buy borrowed shit. Like, you know, old stuff from someone else's use because there's no fucking point in buying all of that new since me I'm not like competing in uh, slalom or anything I'm just doing it for fun and I need the gear maybe 10 or 20 times per year I'm not gonna be needing that the newest of the newest like that's that's just gonna make, make me sad and anxious when I don't use them so use some fucking old gear it's gonna make you more happy and anything else. All right, so we are arriving at the mm, almighty old old yard. And we have all kinds of nice buildings here. Everything is almost like, it's like new. Even though it's old, it looks so nice. They put so much effort into making this place look stunning. And uh, here is, a nice, uh, it's like a a la carte restaurant. It's not open this time of year. I think, I'm not sure, but it may be. But anyways, like eating here in the summer. There's also a, a pizza place down there. And uh, yeah, so I love this place. Um, I have a boat myself, a wooden boat that is also built here. All right, here we are. Uh, so, say hello to my friend, Bonito.
just like a full-blown workspace here. You can like probably build a boat with these tools here. But now this is not built from scratch, but it's like at least 80% built from scratch <laughs> all over again. All right, here we have him, the man, <laughs> Yanni Mahta. What's up? Hello, how are you doing? I'm great, thanks. How are you? I'm, I'm quite great. It's, uh, it's the varnish probably that makes my, me, me feel so great. But, <laughs> <laughs> so, I can tell from the smell. Yeah, yeah so I'm, I'm varnishing this, uh, the roof, roof uh, how do you say it? The wooden, the mahogany trim. I stained oh. it three times and now I'm applying the first coat of varnish. As you can see, I'm, I'm a sloppy varnisher because it's all over the... <laughs> yeah, it's all over, but these are going to be great. And, and when I'm finished with this, then I'm going to sand down, down the, 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 the wall or the ceiling or how, how do you say it? I don't, I don't yeah. know. I, I'm not sure. You, <laughs> you have to, you, sometimes you have to improvise with all the worlds. Uh, but anyways, it's looking quite fantastic. Um, compared to how it looked when you found her. So... I guess making progress is all about just doing and then uh, you learn in the process. But it's like a mirror. You can, you can see yourself from the boat. So I, I guess, it's gonna it, be, yeah. It's going to be real nice. We have 11 coats on the, on the sides and we're going to sand it down properly, make it look like properly a mirror. Oh, so it's going to be even shinier than it is now. Yes. Holy shit. Yes. I, <laughs> Not completed yet. I can't believe it. Because as I told uh, earlier, I have a boat myself. Not quite as big as uh, Bonito here. But the boat that I have, it, yeah, it looks quite good if you look at it from like a mile's distance. But when you get closer, it's like half the quality of this, the varnish. But who gives a fuck? It's, it's still like, it's a beautiful boat. And uh, so, because, and yeah. Did you know that uh, your boat was most likely built in this very room where we are uh -huh. today? Bonita was built in the next, next room behind the wall. But we have another like workshop in, in here. Not anymore, but this whole building, it has uh, three spaces from different eras, and this is the last one built in maybe the 30s, 40s, and your boat was probably built in this very room. <laughs> so both yeah. boats. Funny here stuff. <laughs> yeah, I, I, uh, I didn't know that actually. That's, that's quite interesting. to tell you a small story or a short story about Yanni and me and how we met. So uh, it all begins with like our fathers. They are both quite enthusiastic about wooden boats and it all dates back to like when they were young because there wasn't any other boats than wooden boats. And at some point the entire world decided that hey let's let's just sink most of the ugly wooden boats because now we have fiberglass boats. And so what happened, yeah, scarcity happened. At some point in like the early 90s, I guess, wooden boats became quite a rare item. If you had a wooden boat, you would be like one out of 100 boaters. And uh, that, that was considered quite something. 
but today it's even more scarce on we can see like what our fathers did at the point where everybody else took like you know an easily maintainable boat and just did what everybody did with that just put it on the water and enjoyed driving it they didn't just enjoy or like our fathers didn't just enjoy that part they just they wanted to like to make the wooden boats a part of their life so that's what they did and my father found his first wooden boat the one that i now have in the 80s and uh, Yanni's father has been like a wooden boat enthusiast his entire life. I, I, I think they have had at least a couple or <laughs> maybe, I don't know, maybe 200 wooden boats like in their possession or been involved with them somehow. And it all like, it all comes back to this place, uh, Obu Botvar. So uh, most of the boats in the area are built here. But also, like there are boats uh, that are built all, all around uh, Scandinavia that they have been involved with. But the funny part is that we didn't actually choose to be involved with the wooden boats. We, we, quite frankly, we had to be involved. We were, quite, we, were, we were quite frankly brainwashed by our dads because they, they didn't know anything else uh, to like how to spend their uh, free time than with wooden boats. So uh, yeah, so that's where we are now. But I'm quite happy because uh, it's, it's like such a weird but beautiful thing to, to have these kind of, I think they are not boats at all. They are pieces of art. Um, so, yeah, that's like how we got introduced to one another. Also, I somehow got a hold of Yanni's uh, information through some channel. I don't know where, but I knew that his dad was good at some things regarding. I don't know. I I, I can't even remember what it actually was, but. Somehow think, we got in contact and we started think, discussing uh, boats. I think I found you in, uh, in the Finnish wooden boat forum. Ah. I think you had some kind of a post there. Or then that you contacted be. me there. I don't, I don't know which one. We should check it out. <laughs> but I think you made a yeah. post there about your boat and I was like, what the? <laughs> I'm like, what the hell? This is the coolest boat I've ever seen. And, and uh, yeah, that's when, when I had to, had to contact you. All right. That's how it started. I, I think I remember the first call with your dad as well, because it was somehow like you you asked me to call him because I had so many questions. So you said, yeah. just call him. He'll probably know all the answers. And then I called him and we spoke for like two hours or something. Yeah, and then you, then you came, one time you came to our warehouse. Yeah, that I don't remember. Yeah. yeah. That's when we met for the first time. That was that was quite interesting. Yeah, that, that's one more I got like in. Um, uh, that was one when I first like started discussing about varnishes and stuff because the wooden boat that I have was like completely without varnish, and it had been for like twenty some years, and so I didn't know what to do with it. But fortunately. Yanni and his dad had uh, quite, quite a few tips and tricks on how to do it.
Oh, what did you do? Mm, you fucked it up. Yeah, they fucked it up. Here, and now I'm... <laughs> I, just, I just said that don't stress about the Varnish. Fuck! <laughs> so, so uh, do we have a solution for this? Yeah. Either, like, uh, you should uh, shave all of your hair. Yeah. Or then I guess maybe it's from the brush. <laughs> Usually it's from the brush. Sometimes I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes I feel it's. This is gonna be nice. Nobody's gonna see one little hair. Except me. I'm the one who's gonna see. But you should just varnish with the lights off. Lights off. What a, yeah, what a pleasure. You don't see any errors or anything. The details are quite amazing. You can't just understand what amount of work has been like put into this boat. Too much. How much Too of much. the boat is original and how much is like res rest or restored? Restored. Well, all of it is restored. Uh, basically, every single piece of wood you find in this boat is uh, has been on the table at some point. All right, but is there like, do you know like about some kind well, of percentage? How much is like original bottom, wood? I'm gonna go step by step. Mm -hmm. The bottom of the boat is all new. The ribs you can see here. Um, we have 112 ribs. And oh, shit. 98 of them, or 92, 92 of them had to be replaced. All right, yeah, that's quite, yeah, quite a few. Yeah, and um, uh, all of these, these walls, how do you say, the yeah. sections? Section walls, yeah. something, yeah. yeah. All of them are original, uh -huh. all the original doors, hatches and all the original metal parts, we have over 100 uh, brass parts and then we have some cast iron parts. Nice. And yeah, uh, the side planking about, I think we could save around 70%. Oh. And yeah, lots, lots of new stuff and lots of old. I think I said almost 80% of the boat is new or restored. I don't even remember what I said. <laughs> yeah, we could say about <laughs> yeah. 60 to 60 or 70 percent is new, maybe. But at least but like the like you have had it all apart. That's yeah. That's and if you're gonna like, sometimes people want to debate: is this boat original? If it's if it's uh, like so much of it is new, but I'm gonna tell you, I've used... Um, my father tried to buy this boat 30 years ago. He tried to buy this boat 30 years ago <laughs> for the first time and he couldn't do it because the owner wouldn't sell. And huh. 15 years ago we found it in terrible condition, full of snow and ice. And my father had brainwashed me to promise that we have to find this boat. And when we find it, then we're gonna make it nice again and to me this is definitely that boat because if it wasn't that boat i wouldn't be interested in a replica of this boat what i'm interested in is the history the stories um the passion behind it and, and and that's what makes this boat so we've been restoring this boat for the last five years um i'm in debt because of this boat. <laughs> I've used my savings, my apartment savings, and and uh, I have some loan, and I've sold some, so, sold some cars. I was about to say, you sold some coke or... <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> not, yeah, not, yeah no. not quite like... Not yet. That. That's something I haven't <laughs> done yet, and I haven't uh, made an OnlyFans. Okay, <laughs> but soon, soon. It's, this boat is going to be... Uh, ready this summer. Hopefully, because Hopefully. if not, then I'm really going to have to consider about the OnlyFans. Okay. <laughs> but um, yes, we are going in water this summer and we're going to do charter. 
So we're gonna take companies and tourists and wedding couples and anyone to cruises to the Finnish archipelago. And we're gonna show some uh, prohibition stories. Regarding... Did you hear that? We had prohibition from 1919 to 1932. And that's that's something we are very inspired about and we're gonna do some uh, prohibition tours we're gonna find find a sunken liquid treasure and we're gonna <laughs> nice yes don't tell anyone because the prohibition is not fully over yet <laughs> <laughs> if you at some point consider coming to Finland then you should let me know and I can inform Yanni so he will arrange a trip for you and anyone you have with you uh, to go out on the archipelago sea of the Saaristo of Turku like you know yeah we have a small set of islands I think it's like a small one <laughs> <laughs> that, that, uh, this, what's it called like uh, I think uh, the Something. The land of a thousand islands or land of a thousand lakes? Uh, I think we are in lakes. the land of a thousand lakes, but we have one very big and amazing archipelago. And it's it's endless. <laughs> so we, I, I guess we have more lakes than than we have islands, but Maybe. we have quite quite a few islands as well. Yeah, we have at least three, one, three islands. <laughs> <laughs> at least. <laughs> at least. <laughs> at least. But so, so yeah, just uh, send me a DM and I will make sure that Jani knows you are coming to Finland and he can arrange a trip for you. Definitely, definitely. That's, that's something we want to do. So what is this? Uh, is this like some kind of cabin or what kind of compartment is this? This is uh, in the drawings. This area here is... Uh, the kitchen and the toilet. All right. So the side you're in is going to be the toilet, and the other side is going to be the kitchen. And then we have a little, little uh, closet for for the captain's clothing. I try to. What else? Tata Norka. And now we're speaking Finnish. Oh no, we're not. We're not serious. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. When I get excited. <laughs> Oh, that was not as easy as I thought with the camera in hand. But yeah, so so you you're saying that you're gonna serve food and drinks on this boat as well. Yes, so at least drinks, and of course we're not gonna cook like full meals. We have so <laughs> many nice restaurants uh, in the Aura River and all around the archipelago so we can go wherever we want and order whatever we want we can go to the restaurant or we can eat inside the saloon mm. or of course take away take away it's it's easy yeah but but uh, cocktails wine rum pirtu which is <laughs> moonshine <laughs> that's what what they used to do they sell that in finland in in the bars of course they do pirtu why wouldn't they yeah well, Home. I can I can Home. arrange it. I'm, I, I'm not. I'm. I'm no, don't ten, don't tell anyone. No, but, uh, no. Definitely. We're gonna sell bonito pirco. Oh, that sounds yeah. sounds nice. And actually, this is this is in Finnish, but I I, I bought this domain. Pirtu kuningas piste fi. Pirtu kuningas yeah. piste fi. That uh, pirtu kuningas that? means the, the, the smuggler king. <laughs> so if I get caught, if anyone of you rats me out, then I'm gonna use my new domain, pirtu kuningas piste fi, and then I'm gonna become one. <laughs> so, I don't know. That's, so that's your that's plan, plan B. Plan, plan B. B and plan A. <laughs> All right. Oh, sorry. I'm just gonna pretend that I'm. Uh, the skipper of this yacht now. Sail away, ahoy. <laughs> ahoy. ahoy. That's like, a, um, I guess, the word to say. But look at this rudder. It's original and it's in a pretty good condition. It also has like a inscripted logo of Bonito's name and 
Even the metal details of uh, brass are in quite good condition. Nothing, nothing that that bad. Even though the boat has been, oh, I mean, how for how long has the boat been outside, um, uh, under the mercy of the sun and the rain and all of that stuff? We know the last year this boat was in water was in 1991, and uh, after that. It was sitting in people's yards and sometimes inside in a warehouse and at some point, I think it was at least 10 years in outside. First oh under God. a tarp and then the tarp flew off and then <laughs> whatever. Uh, so we have all the original brass parts for this boat. I think maybe two little parts are missing and that we have copies of so we, we can make new ones. But. Uh, so even even the name of the boat is is uh, scrib scribed on on the brass part and and uh, so you cannot change the name of this boat. <laughs> uh, of course not, and that's bad luck as well, I guess. Yes, but sometimes there is like a special ritual you can do to change a boat's name, but you have to change it everywhere, including all the documents and all of that. But it would wouldn't be nice to make make a new ring for it but yeah of course not no no i guess yeah. i and guess what that's... i'm gonna restore or someone is gonna restore <laughs> someone is gonna so i hope it's me yeah. so i'm gonna go all over the wood parts of the rudder and then we're gonna polish the brass and it's gonna be amazing when you're coming over <laughs> that sounds good yeah you can see some parts are gold-ish so that's, that's like the the direction of yeah that's the direction of the finish of the brass like everything is gonna look gold like yes. you have the one part that is almost like finished is yeah. the front it's, it's uh, hook or something what what's it called something the, the part that is uh, that's the bullet hole for for anchor wire uh, anchor chain that's oh. where the anchor chain goes it's through. massive yeah it's massive and it's it shines yeah it's like like all of the parts everything that's metal here is brass except for as he said yeah uh, some of the cast iron parts i guess here. those would bend if they went cast iron maybe mm, maybe and that's how it is so yeah. but they look they look quite nice they are also restored so yeah they look like they were in original condition yeah um, well, i'm so happy that we have all the original parts amazing yeah it's uh it's quite a, a miracle one could say look at this it's uh it's such a beautiful finish and the whole boat is gonna look like this yeah and even better <laughs> the window <As> promised. <laughs> yes yes the windows on this boat they are gonna be facet glass which means the edge of the glass has been uh cut in an angle so it's gonna look amazing and we're oh. gonna have uh, buttoned leather sofas inside. A gramophone, a brass gramophone, of course. Oh my god, yeah, I'm not gonna touch that. Yeah. <laughs> There's quite a lot of space in here. So you said the sofas are going there? Yes, so we have two sofas on both, of, both sides of the saloon. Uh -huh. And then we're gonna have a little table in between. Then of course oh, we have the, the grog veranda, or how do you mm. say it? The terrace in the back. The booze gonna, terrace. Yes, the booze terrace, that's what we say. <laughs> Grogi veranda. And uh, we're gonna have a leather sofa there too. So that's the, that's the, how do you say it? The Pirtu Kuningan paikka. Oh, <laughs> the, the place where, where, where the king, yes, the king, where the king yeah. sits. Yeah. And uh, so when this boat was originally ordered in 1921, it was owned by a very great man, a local man who was very rich and very uh, successful, the grand old man of, uh, not shipping, how do you say, when you take stuff out of the ships and put stuff in, well, anywhere, uh, anyways, so, yeah, something, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he had a very beautiful summer villa in this very same island when the boat, where the boat was built, and every day he would go to his workplace, 
he had his own driver. I'm gonna have my own driver too. <laughs> and he would sit inside the saloon, maybe reading a newspaper or a drinking coffee. And in the evening when he came back from the harbor, then he would sit outside on the Krogi veranda <laughs> with a cognac or whiskey in his hand and a cigar in the other hand. So. And waving, of course, to everyone. <laughs> and it's a, it's a ro royal <laughs> yes, wave. Royal wave. That's yeah, that's what we have to learn. Uh, <laughs> so so this boat is it's my passion. It's I can tell. Something uh, I decided we're gonna restore. It was something I, I decided that I'm gonna let take over my life, and that's what I did. So if you start a project like this, prepare for months of nightmares. <laughs> I can uh, confirm he's uh, totally right. But also you can, uh, in addition to months of nightmares, you can also um, be guaranteed months of maybe, what should we call it? Joy. Joy, but <laughs> months of paradise, because that's what you get when you get to drive and enjoy the feeling of this boat it's not like going from place a to b it's more or less just being one with the boat it's it's yeah. like an experience yeah so what i uh what i'm ex expecting the most is uh this is a vision in my head we're gonna take a very beautiful sunset when the the sea goes all calm and we're gonna take this boat to the archipelago we're gonna find a a nice spot. If it's a very calm evening, we're gonna just shut down the engines in the middle of the sea and we're gonna enjoy the sunset. I'm gonna have my guitar, we're gonna have my <laughs> gramophone, we're gonna just enjoy the moment. And that's that's, that's what I want to do. That's enjoy beautiful. the moment on board my dream. Amazing. I can see that in my head. I can envision, envision that and hopefully we can see that come true this summer, but if not, then at least some summer. This summer. This summer, you're okay. coming along. You hear, heard it this I'm summer. <laughs> I'm promising. And you're all coming along. Everybody's coming along. Everybody's yeah. going. Yeah, we're going to make another video when we're going to the Sunset Cruise. Great. Yeah. Oh my God, yeah. It's, a, it's an entire... It's a project. It's probably bigger project than building a house or restoring a house because it's so much detail, it's so much to do. But we will leave this here and hopefully we will get to see Jani and his project soon again. And maybe we can follow up at some point if somebody is interested. And I would also like to thank him for bringing us aboard his soon to be finished ship. And uh, if Anytime. you have something you want to say, um, you, can, uh, you can let them know. There's something you left out that I forgot to ask. <laughs> There's always something, maybe. Well, you didn't mention my my Instagram page. <laughs> All right, yeah. yeah, plug yourself, of course. Like that's always a pleasure to do. So I will put that in the description below. But Yanni, you have a Instagram page which is called Classic Boats Finland. Classic Boats Finland. So it's um, it's my art page, so called. I shoot a lot of other people's boats and go into different events and I started it uh, half a year ago and managed to build the world's second biggest classic boating Instagram page. <laughs> That's not something small. <laughs> I, uh, I want also to congratulate him officially because that's a, that's a quite an amazing achievement. I would say that that's not that. The smallest thing someone can do actually uh, is quite hard to build something like that and it's all from passion it's all from doing hard work years and years of hard work but also i mean you have been the eyes or the like the channel for everyone that wants to see the passion the boats to the entire world that's, like, that's what i want to do share the passion and inspire people uh, you can own a wooden boat too and if you need any help you can always contact me or Bjorn. <laughs> With that said, we will end this here. And I want to thank you very much for tuning in. And I will see you next time. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.